Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're going to study subtraction with regrouping, or it's also called borrowing in subtraction, as it is usually taught in second grade and third grade. Now, subtraction with regrouping or borrowing can sometimes be difficult for students, so here is a way to break it down so that it appears simpler. Instead of writing normally like here, 52 minus 38, we break down 52 and 38 into the tens and ones and write it as 50 plus 2 and 30 plus 8. And now we're going to subtract here ones and tens normally, but of course we notice that from 2 you cannot take away 8. And now comes the regrouping part. The 50, from 50 a 10 is taken and so that it leaves 40 here and the 10 is moved to the ones so that it leaves, gives 12 here in the ones. And now these numbers are gone, as if totally gone. It is now 40 and 12. And then we subtract 12, take away 8, and 40, take away 30. So the answer will be 40. Okay? Normally, of course, you know how it is done. We borrow from the tens, and leave 4 tens here. And here we have 12. 12 minus 8 is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. But this notation makes it more transparent what is happening. If the child has difficulty with this here, you can practice the regrouping part by itself. This part does not have any subtraction going on. All we do is we take a number, like 41, and write it with its tens and ones, and then take one ten from the tens, and move it to the ones, so that the 40 and 1 becomes 30 and 11. There's no subtraction. All we do is regroup. It's, first of all, it is a group of four tens and one, and then it is a group, group of three tens and a group of eleven. Well, here's another example. Ninety-three would be ninety and three, and it, then it becomes eighty and thirteen. And if this kind of practice still doesn't help the child with the subtraction itself here, then you might need to take manipulatives and go into concrete stuff and try to help explain the whole process with manipulatives and that's what we're going to look at next. If the symbolic notation with numbers doesn't help the child to understand the regrouping, you can try some kind of manipulatives where you have 10 bundles or base 10 manipulatives as they are called. Here I have pencils bundled up in tens. You could use toothpicks for example. And we presented it to the child that I have 41 pencils, 4 tens and 1 loose pencil. And I have to take away 28 pencils. So how do I do that? I can take away 20 pencils easily. It's, it would be these two bundles, right? But to take away the 8 pencils, the child has to take one bundle and uh, unbundle it. And that's the regrouping part, is when you unbundle it. And you have now 10 loose pencils plus the 1 loose pencil. 11 loose pencils, and from these 11 you can easily take away 8 loose pencils, leaving 3 loose pencils. And then those 2 tens are taken away, leaving 1 ten. If this yet does not help the child to understand the regrouping or borrowing in subtraction, then it might be that the child is not ready yet to understand this at all, but will need more practice with just basic place value of tens and ones. Now we are ready to go on to three-digit subtraction. And it is important that the child has learned well subtraction with two-digit numbers before you go on to subtracting three-digit numbers. And first of all, present to the child these situations where we only need to regroup one time or borrow one time. For example, 571 minus 259. The regrouping happens just like with two-digit numbers because it happens from tens to ones. Uh, 70 becomes 60 and in the ones column we have then 11. And then we can subtract 11 minus 9 is 2, 60 minus 50 is 10, and here 500 minus 200 is 300. So it is identical to the two-digit situation except there was some hundreds to subtract too. And now in this situation we have to borrow from the hundreds or regroup from hundreds to tens. Six minus two you can subtract, but then here in the tens, you have to go to the hundreds 
and take 100, leaving 700, and move it here, so this becomes 150. 150 minus 90 is 60, and then here 700 minus 300 is 400. Like that. Over here, similarly, 6 minus 2 is 4. 5 minus 9 you cannot do, so you borrow from here, leaving 700 and 15 tens. And after these, we will then go on to the situation where the child has to regroup two times, or borrow two times. Now we are ready to study subtraction with three digit numbers where the child has to re regroup twice, or borrow twice. And it is important that you don't go into this until the child has first learned to subtract with borrowing once or regrouping once with three digit numbers. And here's an example. Here the ones, two, take away eight, we cannot do, so we have to then take a ten from here and move it to the ones or regroup. And now we can do twelve minus eight is four, and twenty minus eighty we cannot do, so now again we have to regroup. Take 100 from here, leave 300, and this becomes 120. And now 120 minus 80 is 4, 40, and then 300 minus 200 is 100. And this is how it looks like here. 2 minus 8 you cannot do, so you take a 10, leaving 2 tens, and here 12 ones, and then subtract. And then in the tens you cannot do it, so you have to take 100 and it becomes 12 tenths, and now subtract. Okay. After this, there is still one more special situation for children to learn, and that is to borrow, so to speak, over a zero. Okay, when there's a zero in the middle somewhere. And it goes like this. We cannot subtract in the ones, three minus seven. So we would usually take a ten from here, but there are no tens. So then we go straight to the hundreds and take a hundred, leaving 500, and the 100 moves here. And now, from the 100, we take 110, leaving, of course, 90, and then here is the 10 with the 3, so there's 13. And now we can subtract 13 minus 7, 90 minus 20, and 500 minus 400. And it looks similar here. 3 minus 7 you cannot do, you cannot borrow from the tens, so it's a 100. It becomes 10 tens. Then you take one of the tens, leaves 9 tens, and here you get 13 ones. And then 13 minus 7 is 6, and minus 2 is 7, and minus 4 is 1. 